So hey guys, good Wednesday morning to you. Got another great Lake Erie report. We're gonna try to get all of you up to speed on the ports that were open here this past weekend. This uh, report's coming you from over in the Minky Marine area. Now, where's Minky Marine? It's right over there in that cluster of marinas that's all about 15 or so miles to the east of uh, the Maumee River mouth. And so this is, this is between there and the Davis Bessie Power Plant to those of you who want a fixed landmark. And uh, it's a great early season spot. Listen, this is the big, Minky's is the biggest marina in the Great Lakes. I believe they've got somewhere north of 16 or 1700 slips. A great place to store your boat, whether it's a month or two early in the season or year round, this is a great place to keep your boat. But the report we got was from Steve Webb. Thanks a lot, Steve, for another great report. Uh, and he was fishing the 20 to 24 foot break line from Minky to the, towards the Maumee River Basin. So the 20 to 24 foot break line just outside the marina. And then he had a little bit of a little tiny east wind trailer. So he just took that on towards the west. And uh, he said it was lights out. It was unbelievable. You see the pictures, he was catching fish one after the other. So here was his program. His program was about 70 to 110. And he was throwing a combination of Rapala DHJ-12s, which is kind of a really good early season bait, as well as some bandits. And he was mixing the two and doing really well, 70 to 110 back. Now, his best colors were a little different than our Port Clinton report, probably because of water color. Now guys, be real careful when you start fishing. The more west you go, the more color you're gonna deal with. And that color can be really important to holding fish. It can also be too colored to really have a great day. So my rule is this, uh, if I'm letting three or four feet of line out of my rod tip and I put my rod tip at the water and that bait dives down all a foot and then you keep lowering your rod tip until you lose sight of it. If you've got a good 18 inches of clarity where you can still pretty obviously see your bait and it's in its waggle motion, you've got good enough clarity to fish. If you start losing your bait after just one foot under the surface, that to me is too dirty to waste your time. You're gonna to wanna to slide out closer to the clean water. There's always a clean water edge somewhere. So it's not so much about the depth, it's so much about the color of water that you're looking for this time of year. Now, Steve said he was looking for that stained and clean water mixing, that mixing edge where it was happening. That's usually all about a quarter to a half a mile wide where you get real clean water and real dirty water and there's that mixing area that occurs. That's fishable water. He was using white body baits. So his DHJ-12s and his uh, bandits were white based baits with just really bright uh, contrast colors. He was doing well on the black headed wonder bread, the, the uh, purple headed wonder bread. So basically that white based bait with a real good diff, real dark colored head and the dots. That's all actually Steve's an experienced fisherman. He knows darn well the things I've learned too is that when you're in that stained water you want contrast. You want lots of different stuff going on on white. That's a really good background so that those walleyes have an easy time of picking that bait out and being able to locate it. Yeah, they hear the rattles and that can get them close, but in the end, they're still gonna eyesight uh, attack and they wanna be able to see that bait. So speed for Steve was one to one three. That was his range that he was doing the best. Now he was also though doing some soft turns and he said uh, that way, you know, he was really never, you know, sometimes the baits would surge a little faster than one three and sometimes they would slow, uh, drop a little slower than one. But he said most of the time he would guess that the fish were hitting, you know, at that one to one three speed, which is really typical. Steve tells us that the water temperature was 35 to 37. Now obviously this week with some beautiful weather down there, that temperature is gonna shoot up into the low 40s. That's gonna get the fish thinking about spawning and that's gonna send a lot of fish into the shallow water to spawn on hard bottom or out to the reefs uh, in the firing range, the Camp Perry firing range reefs. We'll probably be back next week with a report from the reefs fishing. So if you're looking to get out on a charter, give my friend from uh, Meinke who, who 
you know, has his boat right there at Minky Marine. Rocco Papandrea, Captain Rocco from Rockin' and Reelin' Sport Fishing. He's a great charter. He's been three decades in this business. He'll put you out on the water. You'll have a great time. Plus, Rocco really enjoys the rod and hand jig fishing, whether it's hair jigs or bladed jigs. Rocco is an expert at that. So if you don't, if you're not into trolling, Rocco can put you on the rod and hand fishing as well. Hey. Thanks for joining us here. Hopefully that gets you close to some fish and hopefully you get out and start fishing this week. Here's our RH1 adjustable rod holder. This is one of our most versatile rod holders for the money. All machined aluminum knuckles right here. There is a hub in the middle of this. So one of the most important things that everybody kind of struggles with on here is getting this rod holder to adjust. But it has a lot of positions and it's very easy to work with once you grasp it. So you actually have to pull out at the very bottom of this rod holder to get the adjustability out of it. And if you pull out to the side nice and easy, you will get all the adjustment you want. It works just perfect. And that adjust up and down that way it will come all the way back inside the boat so if you had to have a rod holder worry about putting a cover on it really helps in that aspect and we have all of our teeth machined in the bottom so we can rotate this around 360 degrees i can fish off the back of the boat on here and run a bottom bouncer if i wanted to i can fish it straight off the side of this boat and i could run a dipsy diver out of here that's how strong this setup is so very very versatile for the money on it and the strength um the rh1 rod holder Check us out, TraxTech.com. Hey guys, next report of the day, doing the same thing, taking you from Southern Ohio all the way, no, Southern, Southern Lake Erie on the North Ohio shoreline, all the way across the bridge to Marquette. Guys, listen up. This is something you gotta try. Now my friend Mike Cosiera from Marquette Adventures runs a guide service on Lake Superior right there in Marquette County. He tells me this is, because of the awesome ice this year, this is gonna be a bonsai last two weeks of the ice fishing season. He's got tons, as you see these pictures going across the screen, you'll get it. He's got tons of really nice sized burbot coming through. Now, these fish are slowly making their way up the grade to the shallower water to spawn pretty much right at ice out. So that'll be in another couple weeks. But we're intercepting them right now between, oh, you know, 50 and 70 feet of water. That's where they're in the column right now as they work their way towards shoreline. Now they've been really susceptible and catchable. Mike's been having nights where he's getting 10, 15 fish in a night. And these are big fish and they're very tasty to eat. Uh, the presentation is simple. Uh, you're fishing a jig and spoon. You're tipping that with um, rosies or a uh, couple of minnows on the treble. Uh, a lot of guys even, to be honest, it sounds a little gross, they'll, they'll cut their minnows or pinch their minnows off to expose a little scent, get scent going in the water. Um, burbot are really kind of like they're not an overly aggressive fish. They got to kind of smell their food and, and work their way and hone in on it. So you're pounding the bottom and then holding still three, four inches off. And then pounding the bottom and holding still three or four inches off. Not wild movements at all. Burbot don't need that. They're curious like lake trout. They want to hear that contact with the bottom and that silt that you beat and, and cause to cloud up. They'll come in kind of like a catfish almost investigating and they'll find your bait if you just hold it still about three inches off the bottom. They'll find it and when they hit, they hit aggressively. You'll know it, trust me. So that's the burbot story. Now we also got splate, coho, and whitefish still working that shoreline area where Mike is catching those burbot. Now, those are being caught right now on small presentations. Something as small as tungstens and wackies are working really, really, uh, <laughs> waxies, not wackies. Tungsten and waxies are working really, really well on light tackle. A lot of fun to catch splate, coho, and, and whitefish on light tackle. And you know what, this time of the year, those fish have been out there in that brutally cold water all year. These are the firmest fillets you're ever going to eat. When you catch these three species of fish right now, they are going to be the best tasting fish of the year for sure. And so getting up there, getting out with Mike, doing that family trip or a group of four to six guys, even a corporate trip, guys, Mike does all of this stuff and he's got a handful of other guides that work with him so they can handle a larger party if that's what you got. But this is an experience that you really got to do being out on the ice on Lake Superior. It's kind of freaky. It's kind of freaky in a good way, but you're going to catch a lot of fish. So give my friend a call, Mike Cosiera, Marquette Adventures Guide Service. And you know what? Probably this might be the last report of the year because it's about only a couple of more weeks of the season. But thanks, Mike, for all your great reports all season long from the greater Marquette area.
Freeway Sports Center is Southeast Michigan's fishing boat headquarters. Freeway carries the full line of Angler Quest fishing pontoons and Polar Craft boats, powered by Honda outboard engines. Stop by our showroom today at US 23 and Thompson Road in Fenton, or visit us online at freewaysports.com. Spring, summer, fall, or winter, get to Freeway Sports Center. Hey guys, awesome reports, right? I mean, we're talking Lake Erie walleye open water and we're talking they still got 20 inches of ice on Lake Superior. So, you know what, you know, it's really a wild place to live in Michigan. You drive south, you drive north, you got two completely different worlds, but that's kind of the beauty of living in Michigan too. It gives you all that opportunity and all that adventure to do different things. So, hey, thanks for joining us today, Wednesday on the Fisherman's Digest Hot Bite Report. We'll see you again tomorrow with two brand new reports and you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned as we're gonna be talking about steelhead in the Manistee and the Pier Marquette River system. And we got another surprise report from you for way up in the Western UP. You wanna see big fish, you wanna see perch that scare you? Tune in tomorrow morning because we have got some tanks coming from Justin Sofa and Lake Ogiebic.